Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. And today we're thrilled to unveil yet another custom 3D printed project from your mind to real atoms. It's been a busy year. A busy, busy year. So Sean, for this specific project, you work in collaboration with Form Labs. Mm -hmm. They make, of course, the Form 2 SLA 3D printer. And you wanted to design something original Yes. Uh, but also inspired by one of your favorite science fiction franchises. That's right. So uh, we went with a, a, a inspired by Star Wars lightsaber. That's right. I guess we, the, the technical thing we're going to call this is a lightsaber inspired yeah. laser sword hilt. So we have Luke's from Jedi here. This That's is right. not, this is uh, uh, one that I bought. It's not made, but I wanted to do something like that. Chunky, you know, a lot of heft to it. Um, not so sleek like some of the other ones. Um, but I also didn't want to do, uh, they've been done over and over and over. And That's I didn't, I wanted to do something original and something from like completely out of my head, which I haven't done for a while. And so. also that takes advantage of the 3D printing process. Exactly. Now, fans have been building these type of hilts for a long time now out of all sorts of materials. It's not mm -hmm. too difficult to get a dowel, slap some freebies on, all the way to if you have a lathe and you can spin one. Right. It's almost like a rite of passage as it was for the characters in the films, yes. but for makers as well. And right. even our friends have designed replicas in uh, 3D printing. Yeah, and uh, so Jackie, Jackie had a really nice one that, that very similar went together in lots of pieces. And you know, so this is my forte, this is my medium, so this is how I approached it. So. Um, this is it. We ended up with this guy and it's obviously not a good guy's uh, I, can, I can tell by the pointy it, parts. It, you know, I wanted, like I said, I wanted something beefy. I wanted this to be something where you could almost take this by itself, not even lit up, and just clobber them. You know, uh, so it's pretty, you know, I wanted something aggressive. It's pointy up here. So, yeah, yeah, you got a beefy pommel at the end. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that you're taking advantage of with the 3D printing is just the, just how fine the details are. Yeah. It's really I mean, sharp. These, you could ship top. somebody with those, yeah. I see some uh, some clear uh, some uh, uh, so great cutouts, cutouts mm -hmm. pieces right there. Yep. Um, and then you also use some interesting resins. Yes. Uh, part of uh, part of what we wanted to do with this is that Form Labs just released uh, new formulations of of existing resins and then some brand new ones. So they updated the black, which I, I love the black. It's one of my favorites because it shows off detail really well. And it's a, the black is even blacker. It's like a deeper black. And I, I feel that it even shows detail even better than the previous uh, formulation. Um, they updated the clear uh, so that it's even more clear. Mm. And the clear had a tendency to, um, it could yellow over time. And this one resists that a lot better so that you won't, you won't get that as much, which is nice. Um, they upgraded uh, the tough, which I didn't use on this particular one, but it just prints a little better now. And finally, they introduced this new flex, which I was ex I'm excited about because the previous flex was a clear and it's, it's pretty stiff. Um, and this one is a reformulation and it's a kind of a dark gray black. Um, which is what we use for the hand grips. The grips makes and a lot of sense for the bu the button here. Um, and it's it's pretty firm. It's when you get in the rubber, it's like the shore scale. It's a 75A, which is like a like a boot heel uh, kind of if you think that kind of firmness. Um, but we wanted to mix and match a lot of these different materials on this and see what they would do. Yeah, and that soft rubberized yeah. plastic lets you. It works well for yeah, grip. It's, it's a good, good feeling. Good grip, yeah. And we're talking about SLA 3D printing. So a lot of printers out there use FDM, we should yes. talk about. And FDM, you're melting plastic, you have PLA materials or ABS plastic. But right. with curing resin, a lot of material science goes in and you can get all sorts of formulations. Yes. And and it's in this case, it's curing by laser. Right. Uh, and then we do uh, post-processing, usually curing it a little further by UV light, just mm. so that it's as, as solid as it can be. Now, you mentioned uh, there are grips here. There's a button, so some electronics in here as yes. well. You press a button that lights up. I saw a light yeah, over the top see there. A little light up there. Very cool. Uh, the other thing is that you designed this as a kit. So while yes. this is the completed hilt, over in front of me are all the pieces yeah, that go pieces into go in this. There. And um, part of that was to show off different materials. Part of it was just for, you know, you don't want to print out a whole lightsaber side. Uh, you, want it, you want it to be in sections so it's easier to print. 
Right, and your design of this, because you wanted something beefy, also I found it really interesting, you went back to camera components. Now, yeah, I did a little old school. Yeah, not a lot of people know that Sean used to work repairing cameras yes. uh, when you were at, um, at uh, over at my review. And I still do on the side. And you still and do I on the side. Stuff, so. so you have, like, in your shop, old camera parts, which yes. are exactly what the prop makers for Star Wars used to build the original mm -hmm. lightsabers. And yeah, over the years, I, I, I've been doing this for 15 years or more. And so there's just lots of really cool parts on these things. So anytime something broke and I, I would take it off, I would just keep it if it was cool looking. Um, and I've just, I have this box of neat stuff. And that's how they built a lot of these original ones, like the Graflex flash handles yep. and, and all the greeblies and stuff. So normally I, I will just kind of sketch things out, but this I decided to go really old school and I just started picking out cool parts and kind of putting them together to like resemble some kind of like a, you know, a lightsaber. Right. And I wanted to get something real beefy looking. Yeah, I was just like, I was just stacking things up like Lego, you know, and, and I was like, oh, it looks neat, I like that. So. I ended up kind of cherry picking a lot of these um, elements and and duplicating or modifying them in my model uh, to kind of get that look. So like we kind of have the bottom here. You can see where this inspiration came what from. What is that? This is a a, a speed uh, control off of a motor. Okay. Uh, off a camera motor. This is part of an uh, eyepiece mechanism for a 35 millimeter motion picture camera. Nice. Uh, we have. Uh, iris lenses uh, Ooh, from lenses. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we have. And so uh, you use that to inspire the emitter it, section. Yeah, uh, the uh, the other things inside were inspired right off of like actual prisms from cameras and stuff like that. So yeah, I think this is a we got a part of a hard drive there. Oh, nice. You know? Oh, so, this yeah. is so cool because every uh, laser sword has it, a crystal. Yeah, you know that's that's the, the energy comes from. And you use this prism right out from of a, a DSLR. No, that's actually out of a 35 millimeter oh, motion picture camera. Wow. Yeah. And that's just remodeled and scaled and down. Same thing with this guy also from, uh, this is from an airy motion picture camera. And I basically just modified it, scaled it down, but it is, it's pretty much that because I like how it looks. And it made sense for a laser sword. Now I see a lot more detail and many more pieces here laid out in yes. front of me than what appear to make this laser sword hilt. Well, um, and so that we've buried the lead long enough. <laughs> the cool thing about this project is not only is it a kit, it's yeah. also a cross section. Cause I love that. I, that's one of my favorite things to look at is when they do the cutaways. Yeah. And so it was just an opportunity to go crazy and be like, Oh, what, what, what the heck could you put in here? You know? So, um, I reined it in a little bit. It doesn't have any sound or anything, but it does light up and the actual rubber uh, button lights it up. And it made nice use of the clear resins for the crystals. So we have an LED embedded in the main one here that kind of lights up the top one. Um, all these little pipes, this is, a, this is actually a power pin from a movie light. And you can see I pretty much almost made an exact duplicate of that. Very good right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I just had fun with it. And, and some of the things that I did were to see how far can I push the form to and it'll still pull things off. So we got all these little pinhole like perforations and like uh, each one of these pipes are separate. And I love the knurling on this and up here on the switch just turned out beautifully. Incredible. Um, one of the more challenging parts I wanted uh, cooling fins up top here. So I did this. This was a bit of a challenge to print. I couldn't print it up and down. I had to get like this with all these little supports under it that had to be cleaned off afterwards. And um, we talked about the rubber grips. So these are just little, they, little pads that print separately and then get glued into the indents on here. And this was interesting because I did something different and I printed these directly on the print platform. Right, so as that's the example of the printer you use, the platform is that black piece which rises up and down as opposed to printing it like this where you have supports right. and it's elevated um, like that, you print it, that's directly on. Yeah, so normally you'd have the supports uh, that hold this to the platform. This, I basically printed right on the platform and uh, 
Part of the reason for that is the flex takes a lot longer to cure. Um, so it can it can be a little longer print times than like some mm. of the other resins. And so by adding supports, and I was doing uh, 36 of these, pr these grip pads, it made for a long print. And then I also had to clean off all the supports. But by doing this right on the print bed, they turned out great and I could just peel them right off and glue them. Now, the catch of that is it compresses the first few layers uh, so that it really sticks to the print bed. So when you do something like that, you can't do it with everything. If tolerances are really important, you don't wanna do that. But this, this, what I did is I actually added 0.25 millimeters to the model. So in the 3D program, it looked way thicker than it should be. Mm -hmm. But by the time it compressed those layers, it turned out the perfect size. I peeled it right off, put it on there, Worked out great. All these little nuances and little tips and tricks are from your experience using this printer for several months now. We reviewed yeah. this printer uh, when we first got it. Um, what's changed since then and what's your, been your experience? Um, first, I say this has worked great for me. It's been very reliable. I've had very few failed prints. Um, the, the reformulation of the, the resins, which we just talked about, they also introduced a, a dental resin which you can actually, it's, it's a class one biocompatible resin that you can print like, uh, they use it for like surgery guides for like dental surgery. So it could be like drill guides or surgery guides that you can actually put in somebody's mouth. Uh, so it is, is safe for the human body wow. after you autoclave it. Right. So that was a new one, it's kind of cool. Um, so the new formulations, they also did some really nice updates to the software. Mm. So the way the supports are generated are completely different. Um, this is actually the in-between from the old, old supports and the new ones, but they print thinner now, so they don't use as much material, which is really nice. And the, my absolute favorite thing they did is, and you will sympathize with this, they added this little bevel to the, at the bottom of each uh, uh, platform. And you can just put the little clippers that come with this and pop it right off. It no makes, need to scrape oh, and fry. No more flying across the room. It, it, they, they come off much easier now. Um, so that was nice. Uh, they've added, um, uh, they completely redid the interface on the, the touch panel so it's a little cleaner and makes a little more sense. Um, but yeah, just they've, I think they've upgraded the software three times since we first uh, reviewed it. So they've been really working hard at, at improvements. Very cool. Well, you definitely put it through its paces in designing and printing this awesome laser sword hilt. Uh, we're gonna do another video, some follow-ups. We're gonna have some write-ups on tested.com as well because like your other projects, we're gonna make these files available yes. for you out there if you have a 3D printer to print your own and we're gonna guide you through the assembly in a future video. Uh, but for now, please enjoy Sean's uh, laser sword hilt, your evil laser sword hilt. Evil. And you know, as with every video that has one of these things in it, uh, we're gonna, put it up for you guys to add the visual effects. I can add the sound effects. Sean, you can provide the action, yeah. and it's up to you to provide some visual effects. Womp, 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 womp. That's Sean from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.